Good afternoon, everyone. I am Andrew Struthers, president of Smart Safe Science 3S. In March, Smart Safe Science heard that Premier Ford and Minister Fidelis call to pivot Ontario's manufacturing sector to make critical PPE. 3S rapidly deployed our engineering team with 35 years of custom design and manufacturing experience to develop real-world solutions to the global pandemic, including the 3S Smart Mask. The prototypes you see today are the combined effort of an exclusively Ontario-based design, development, supply, and manufacturing team. We are committed to overcoming mask fatigue syndrome. People need a cool, consistent, and comfortable mask that allows them to work, play, learn, live, and breathe safely. Smart Safe Science has just delivered that, and we started right here at home in Bracebridge, Muskoka. We are committed to building our local economy and making our world a safer place. I want to thank the Premier, Minister Fideli, and our local mayors for joining us today on this special occasion to tell us more on why we're here. It's my honour and pleasure to introduce the Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Doug Ford. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And, and, Andrew, thank, thank you so much for that warm welcome and the, the great team you have from 3S right here in Bracebridge. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, I have to say, every time I come to Bracebridge and Gravenhurst, you roll out the red carpet, and I'm so grateful for that. The people are friendly, and the communities are just absolutely beautiful, as many of you know when you come up here. If you do get a chance, please come up here and visit and support your local businesses right here in Muskoka. I'm excited to be here with Minister Fideli, our All-Star Economic Development Minister, and it's great to see my friend, the Mayor of Bracebridge, Graydon Smith, who is the incoming president of AMO. Muskoka District Chair, John Clink, great to see you as well, uh, John, and, and as well as the Gravenhurst Mayor, Paul Kelly. Our mayors are absolute champions up here. They work so well together, and I'm just so proud of each and every one of you for the job you've done. And I also want to recognize my parliamentary assistant and local champion for Perry Sound, Muskoka, MPP, Norm Miller. <laughs> See, they, they love you here, Normie. That's great. Norm has been a, a strong voice for the region advocating for your priorities. Priorities like a brand new Muskoka and Area Ontario Health Team to provide better connected care to patients. And expanding the Gravenhurst Dental Clinic so low-income seniors can receive free routine dental care. But it's also a community where we need more jobs, where we need more growth and opportunity as we gradually and safely reopen the province. Today's job numbers are good news for Ontario. We're in the third straight month of employment growth. 142,000 more jobs have been added. That's 142,000 more people are back to work in supporting themselves and their families, including over 12,000 jobs in our manufacturing sector. That's over 670,000 jobs in total over the last three months that we've been added back to our economy. But my friends, we still have a long ways to go. And we have to keep that recovery going. We have a plan, a Made in Ontario plan for growth, renewal, and long-term economic recovery. And it starts with helping Ontario businesses seize the opportunities that exist in this new environment, to find better ways to do things, to make sure we are never caught in a situation again where we don't have the critical supplies we need to keep our frontline workers safe and make sure that we always, always uh, have a, a abundance of supply. And I can tell you, I always said, folks, I'll never rely on a foreign leader, a foreign country to dictate to the people of Ontario or Canada about PPE. And that's a good... <laughs> and... Thank you. And that's exactly what Smart Safe Science and True North Plastics are working on. Many of us may know a family member, a friend, or a neighbour who works on the front lines. Wearing a mask is part of the job, but for many, they're wearing that mask day in and day out, 12 hours a day, sometimes more. It can be really, really uncomfortable, but they wear it to save lives. They wear it to keep others safe and stop the spread of this deadly virus. For those frontline workers, 
I'm proud to say help is here, thanks to the hard work of the team at Smart Safe Science. They have developed an Ontario-made solution to this problem. They created a lighter, breathable, medical-grade face mask. It's a better mask that will help keep our frontline healthcare heroes and frontline workers safe, comfortable, and protected. And they're made right here in Bracebridge. And we want to... <laughs> Absolutely. See, folks, I love these people up here. And, and we want to help uh, this company make as many of them as possible because our frontline heroes deserve the very best. So today, I'm proud to announce our government is investing $2 million through the Ontario Together Fund to help Smart Safe Science mass produce these masks. This, this investment will help the company expand their facilities and ramp up production to 200,000 masks every single month. This will help secure a domestic supply chain of vital PPE so that we will always be prepared and protected no matter what the pandemic may throw at us. If it's Ontario made, it's Ontario strong. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Now I'll pass it over to Minister Fidelis. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Premier, for your ongoing leadership throughout this pandemic. And thank you to Smart Safe Science for hosting us in your uh, new facility here today. Since this pandemic began, the response from business owners, workers, communities and people from across Ontario has been incredible. We have seen firsthand ingenuity and perseverance on display in every corner of Ontario. Our business community has continued to step up and demonstrate the best of Ontario spirit by providing innovative solutions and helping to ensure our frontline workers and people across Ontario are equipped with the critical supplies they need. And thanks to those ongoing efforts, we're ready to get the economic engine of Canada revving again and emerge from this. And you did. You, you brought your cheering section with you, Norm and uh, Mayor. I love it. Uh, we are going to emerge from this pandemic stronger and more resilient than ever before. And that's why we are so proud to announce today's investment. As you heard from Premier Ford, our government is investing $2 million into Smart Safe Science, or 3S, through our Ontario Together Fund. With Ontario's support, 3S will make a face mask that is lighter and more breathable. As we know, face masks have become an essential part of our daily lives through these unprecedented and uncertain times. But for our healthcare professionals and frontline workers who are battling COVID-19, prolonged use of face masks brings fatigue. And this technology, right here from 3S, will help address common mask fatigue syndrome experienced among heavy-use mask wearers. The mask comes with attachments for a smart stick that will monitor body temperature and transmit critical real-time data about the user's health status. And the mask will also conform to the user's facial structure, providing greater comfort and protection. To reach targeted end production capacity, 3S will invest in expanding this facility and purchase new equipment. This Made in Ontario solution will help ensure the health and safety for Ontarians and Canadians and a strengthened domestic supply chain for vital PPE as Ontario continues on our economic path to recovery. Through the Ontario Together Portal and the Ontario Together Fund, we have mobilized our province's manufacturing and innovation might. We will continue to work with the very best innovators and manufacturers and prioritize made in Ontario solutions to ensure a safe reopening and recovery and to maintain our place as the Workshop of Canada. Thank you to everyone, and now it is a great pleasure for me to welcome to the podium the Mayor of Bracebridge, the Honourable Graydon Smith.
Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure to welcome the Premier and Minister Fidelli, MPP Miller to Bracebridge, and all those that are gathered here today for this fantastic announcement. I just want to take a moment and make a few remarks about the Struthers family. Through their business, True North uh, Printed Plastics, they've been an integral part of the Bracebridge business community for uh, almost a decade, and they've put many people to work uh, revitalizing a town that was suffering after the 2008 economic crisis. They continue to think in ways that are innovative, community-minded, and frankly with solutions that are helping more than just the people in Bracebridge, as we've heard today. Uh, to the Struthers family, thank you for your investment in this community and your investment in the people of Ontario. And to the Government of Ontario, thank you for the investment in 3S, which is going to create many jobs here in Bracebridge and uh, be a solution for many people, including our frontline workers in Ontario. So thank you very much, and it's wonderful to have you here today. You know something? I'm stealing, I'm stealing your thunder. I thought it was my turn to answer the questions. We'll get them. Thanks, thanks, Premier. I want to thank our distinguished guests, the Premier, Minister Fidelity, and the good folks at True North Printed Plastics and Smart Safe Science for coming together today on this exciting occasion. I'd also like to thank the mayors for their unwavering support of this project. As the parliamentary assistant for the Premier and MPP for Perry Sound Muskoka, I know the Premier has been a stalwart champion for Ontario-made solutions and Ontario-made products. More than that, we have an opportunity to lead the world in producing high-quality medical equipment and supplies, and there's no reason why it can't happen right here in Muskoka. Not only will we have made in Ontario medical equipment, we will have the benefit of 50 great new jobs right here. Our government will continue to make these strategic investments and support Ontario businesses who have answered the call and joined us in the fight against COVID-19. Thank you everyone for coming today and I hope to see you Premier and Minister Fidelity back in my home riding very soon. Thank you. Well, before, before I start, I have to thank uh, John Batello uh, from Fly Flying Colors International, who made the Ontario made flags there. They look absolutely great. Thank you so much, John. And uh, anyone who wants one of those, just uh, give John a call. So we're ready for the questions. We'll go to the phone line for questions. Just a reminder that it's one question and one follow up, please. Thank you. First question is from Pamela Steele at Bracebridge Examiner. Please go ahead. Hi, Pamela. Mm -hmm. Sorry, one second, Pamela. Kind of like the music, you can keep going. It's all good. Okay, go ahead. We will move to the next question, which is from Laura Stone at the Globe and Mail. Hi, Laura. Hi, Premier. Sorry, no music from me. <laughs> That's all right. I have a question about education. Yes. Can you hear me, Premier? I can hear you. I can hear you, Laura. Um, my first question is about education. Uh, sick kids and even you, the government, have said that being in school is good for the mental and social well-being of kids, especially those from low-income neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yet the TDSB has released data this morning that shows those families are keeping their kids home at a higher rate, some at more than 50 percent. So why hasn't your government done enough to make these families feel safe about a return to the classroom? Wow, I, I, I totally disagree with that, that last uh, comment there, Laura. Uh, why haven't we? We've spent $1.6 billion. We've thrown everything in the kitchen sink uh, at, the, at opening these schools. We have Dr. Heyer, that uh, is one of the most respected doctors in the, in the country. We've put in uh, 50, uh, actually $170 million to hire more teachers. We have 625 nurses that are coming on board. We've hired 1,300 more cleaners. I, I could sit here for the next 10 minutes and rattle off all the areas, but I, I can assure you that uh, we are doing everything we can to keep uh, the, the schools as safe as possible. And I got, I got to talk to the, the kids and, and the students going back. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of fear-mongering on, on TV, 
And for that, I, I apologize to the kids, but I can assure you as Premier, I will do everything in my absolute power to protect our kids and our children and our students uh, in this province. And I will not spare a penny, which I haven't, and I will throw every single resource the kids are so excited about going back to school and, and they, they have a thousand pounds on their, on their shoulders. So kids, I just want to tell you, if you go back to school, I wish you all a, a great year. Make, they'll make sure you practice social distancing, make sure you wash your hands and obviously the, the face masks as well. But you know, I, I just have to tell the kids, we're, we're here for you and I won't for a second hesitate if there's an outbreak anywhere I'll, I'll close the schools down in 10 seconds as I did as the first premier in this entire country to, to close the schools down but uh, Laura we're like we have thrown everything we possibly can uh, at, at the reopening of the schools follow up Premier, some in the health community, such as Doris Grinspun of the Registered Nurses Association, have been calling for Dr. Williams to resign, and they've criticized how he's handled the pandemic. Can you respond to these calls? Are you considering replacing him before a second wave? And can you also explain why you brought in Dr. Dirk Heyer to oversee outbreak plans? Well, first of all, I have all the confidence in the world in Dr. Williams. You know, you know... And I, I, I love Doris. I really do. I have a relationship with Doris. I, I love her. She's a great person. Doris, we need more nurses. I, I need you to bring more nurses to me. We need 625. I know we've hired quite a few, but I need more nurses. We have the money. I want to hire her. But, you know, they've been calling for Dr. Williams' uh, head since the beginning, and I take personal offense uh, for that. Dr. Williams has worked around the clock. This man doesn't sleep. He's out there protecting the people and the numbers speak for themselves because of the leadership of Dr. Williams and his entire team and all 34 chief medical officers around the province. We have the lowest cases per 100,000 in, in North America. Like I, I don't, I, I, I take real offense. Well, what more do you want from this man? The guy is working his back off, giving his best judgment. And by the way, I say it over and over again. Uh, Dr. Williams, in my opinion, is an absolute champion. He works collaboratively, and it's not, uh, Dr. Williams isn't the type of person to say, this is what we're deciding, it's my way or the highway. He, I've never, ever seen that. Matter of fact, to the contrary. He talks to all the health experts uh, around the country, around the province, communicates with all the uh, public health officials, which are, all of them are doctors as well. So I, I just wish him all the best. and. Uh, I'll stand beside uh, Dr. Williams any day, any pandemic. He's given us great uh, guidance and protocols to follow along with his team. So I uh, wish him all the be best. And, and that's a, uh, he's a great guy. Next question. Thank you. Next question will be from Pamela Steele at the Bracebridge Examiner. Please go ahead. Hi, Pamela. Oh, we're rocking and rolling again. We'll go to the next question. Anyways, even going back before that, to, to the media and to everyone, it's so easy to play armchair quarterback and criticize people that are going around the clock. You know, contribute. I always say there's complainers, 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 then there's people that make things happen and say, we have this, we're going to do everything we can, and uh, that's what the principals and the teachers are doing right now. They're, they're going to uh, have a, a good school year. Next question. Will be from Farah Morali at CBC News. Sir, Hi, Premier. Doing? Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. Um, I had a question for you about commercial evictions and uh, business you're familiar with. The Tria Cafe and Bakery in Oakville, this was a place that you had campaigned at back in 2018, has been evicted by their landlords. Uh, their locks were changed this week. Uh, their landlord chose not to participate in uh, CICRA, the Canada Emergency commercial rent assistance program and because of how long they were closed, the owners uh, could make the rent payments in full, which led to their eviction. Um, given that commercial evictions fall under provincial jurisdictions, what could your government have done better to protect small businesses like TRIA, whose landlords chose not to participate in SECRA, and will your government consider extending the moratorium on commercial evictions? Well, we're extending it as of today. It's going to go for another month to the end of September. Uh, our priority is to always make sure we protect uh, businesses out there. And uh, I, I want to look into this and maybe if we can 
give me that contact uh, name again or we'll, we'll look it up and find out because they can't uh, just evict someone. We, we have a, a program in place that as long as uh, the, the landlord pitches in 25%, the tenant pitches in 25%, the federal uh, government will put in 25% and we'll put in uh, 25%. So it's unfortunate they didn't take him up, but he uh, he can't evict them. It's as simple as that. So we'll be addressing the landlord uh, as soon as we get off today. We'll find out who the landlord is. Follow up. Just pivoting out to something a little bit different, a question from a colleague of mine about the COVID alert app. Uh, Ontario, as you know, is or was the first province to adopt this act, and that was more than a month ago. Yep. Uh, since then, the only province to join on is uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. So what's your message to other provinces and territories? Why do you think it's taking them so long to join on? Well, I, I believed in the conversation at uh, our, our cough meetings and, and over uh, at, when we get together, we got together just uh, a couple days ago, uh, I believed everyone was on board. I encourage all the premiers uh, get on board with it. It protects our provinces, protects the country, and uh, there's over, I believe, over two million. It's probably higher by now, but over two million people with the apps. It just makes us a lot safer. So I'll I'll have to talk to the other premiers again and find out what the the issue is. Next question will be from Lucas Meyer at Newstalk 1010. Please go ahead. Hi, Lucas. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Premier. Um, in terms of, I know you spoke earlier this morning with Bill Carroll uh, yes. about the situation going on in Peel. Um, and I'm just wondering, since then, if you've had a chance to speak even more with the health table, uh, and you've often said, you know, everything is on the table, but in terms of the possibility of lifting restrictions, is it more than just off the table, or is this something that you are, you know, seriously discussing about Peel specifically? Well, I'm really concerned about what is happening in, in Brampton. I, I gave the mayor three calls this morning. I haven't, uh, and then by, by the way, it's no offense, Patrick's doing a great job, but I couldn't leave a voicemail. But Patrick, you're listening. I need to talk to you, find out what's happening out there. We can send in mobile units because I'm, I'm really concerned when Brampton makes up 3% of the population and represents 40% of the cases yesterday. That's concerning. And I keep seeing it escalating. But then the, the great chief medical officer of health, they're going around uh, Brampton, and this is a small percentage because I, I lived in Brampton. I love the people of Brampton, they're great folks, but we can't have these backyard parties, not wearing face masks. And anyone who's thinking they're having a big shindig this, this weekend, forget about it, cancel it. Or we won't hesitate to, again, shut, shut it down because again, we're, we're, we're seeing a slow creep uh, so, folks, just follow um, the protocol. Something is broken when you have 3% of the population with 40% of the cases. So I need to sit down with the mayor. He's working his back off every day. Um, but the people, I, I have to stress, the people of Brampton, you're great folks, but you, you cannot, you cannot be holding these parties in the backyard. It's, it's, I can't stress that enough. Follow up. If, since they're, these are connected to backyard parties, have you heard anything unique about them? Is there any, like, I don't know, is there any evidence of people, you know, sharing drinks, sharing marijuana? Any, is there anything like that that you have any evidence of that's anything unique about these? Well, they shouldn't be sharing anything. I don't care if it's those doobies, joints, whatever you want to call them, or drinks or any. Just don't share them. Simple. And uh, wear a face covering. Don't have more. Than, than 10 people. You can't, you're, uh, 10 people, I'm sorry, o outside you can have up towards 100, but guys, in small backyards, it's, it's not large enough. Let's just follow the protocols, be safe, and, uh, and then every, everyone's hunky dory, everyone's going to be happy. Last question. Last question will be from Wendy Gray at Vista Radio. Please go ahead. Hi, Wendy. Thank you, Premier, for taking my call today, Thank or you. my question today. This question is actually from one of our listeners. I thought it was a great analogy. Why is a liquor store with a huge area limited to 10 customers at a time? All the staff is protected behind plexiglass at the counter, but schools will have 30 odd kids with some of the kids, the younger kids especially, being maskless, packed into a regular sized classroom. How do you justify that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I'll, I'll be uh, talking to the, the, the chair and 
president and CEO, I'll talk to the finance minister that falls under his portfolio, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to uh, you know uh, the folks, the uh, uh, Smokey Thomas. He's a great guy too. So maybe they've asked to only have 10 people in the store, but you, you make a good point. But I just want to mention again, uh, the high school uh, students are capped at 15, not at 30. And uh, we've given $170 million to spread out the classrooms, more social distancing. And the teachers and principals have set up uh, some great classrooms. And I, I just, if, if you're up the high numbers, I understand there was five schools, as I mentioned yesterday in TDSB, we'll find you another spot to, uh, to teach to make sure it's, it's safe. Follow up. You've touched on this briefly, but I just wanted to get your take on it. David, Dr. David Williams is obviously concerned. He, he expressed his concern about the, what he called stubborn raising of the numbers, increase of the COVID-19 cases in the province. We hear them every day saying, physical distance, wear a mask, wash your hands. Do you, and then yet we're still hearing about these backyard parties. Is the message just not getting through? Does the government need to do something more to get that message through and resonating? Well, I, I always look at the glass as half full. You know, as much as we see the numbers jumped up a little bit, put it into perspective, 14 and a half million people leading North America uh, to similar jurisdictions anywhere in North America. So the people are doing something, right? They're listening for the most part. And there's always a small percentage, but the problem with COVID you have a small percentage of people that get it, it gets, it goes through like lightning. That's the problem. It only takes a small percentage to get COVID up and up and going. It takes one backyard party with 50 people and those 50 people leave and give it to another 50, another 50, and it just starts compounding. And uh, the, the best thing to do again, are the, the golden rule. And that's, that's the advice we're getting from health and science. But overall, we're still, we're still doing really, really good. And all the people of Ontario get the credit. Uh, everyone, everyone's really, for the most part, listening. There's some, there's always a small group that, uh, you know, may not listen, but, you know, we, we have to, the neighbors got to call them out. Your friends got to call them out. If you know you're going to a party, don't go to the party. It's simple. You aren't going to miss anything. There'll be a lot more parties in the, in the future. So just keep focused on social distancing and, and everything should be fine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a very safe and healthy weekend. Thank you.
you see over here, here's actually the prototype of the kit version, which is a lot smaller. It uses the same filters, but it's really designed for kids to solve some of our back to school.